Hey everybody, welcome back to the farm. This week we are going to be shotting or horseshoeing Jewel, our 16 year old black Percheron mare. So I've been waiting for Jewel's feet to grow out. When I got her six months ago, she was barefoot when I got her, and I think she had been barefoot for quite a while. So she had quite a few imperfections in her feet and she had an abscess that needed to grow out. And we are almost to the point where all the imperfections are grown out now. So we are at a good place where we can shod her. Once we get her shod, then I will be able to take her out on the road and I'll be able to start doing a little bit more with her that I've been hesitant to do thus far. We've just been barefoot trimming her, but at about five and a half, six weeks, her feet start chipping her. You know, she's so big, or the draft horse feet, they start flaring out. When they start flaring out, they start chipping up and start breaking off all the way around the perimeter. And with the shoes on, they're not gonna do that and they'll grow a, a lot more even. But the biggest thing is they won't be chipping. We've been having a lot of rain here in Georgia and this week was no exception, but the heat came with it, just like most of the country. Today, we got up to 92 and I don't know what the humidity was, but I bet it was high 80s, if not higher. Uh, tomorrow is supposed to be 94 and the girls are pretty hot. And when I bring them in to the barn to feed them, they're wet and they've got dried salt on them. So I know they're out there sweating, but they've got shade and they've got water so they can get in it if they want to. But getting back to the shoeing, we're gonna use number eight Kirkhart draft shoes on Jewel. They're clipped in the front right here. And basically what that clip does is it keeps the shoe from sliding back. The draft horses, when they walk, they're a lot of times in, on uneven terrain. They're in the woods, they're on rocks, they're crossing over logs. They're walking in furrows out in the field when you're plowing. So they're on a lot of uneven terrain. So a lot of times they drag their toes. And when they drag their toes, the shoe can shift back on their foot. So this toe clip right here keeps that from shifting back. And this is just a, <clears throat> all-purpose utilitarian Kirkhart farm shoe.
Basically, we still got this old scar we're dealing with. Yep. Oh. It's probably about all I really want to trim on her as far as in here, just to keep her keep the sole depth there that I all possibly can. This helps them from not getting sore. I'm gonna go through and rasp some of this off. Yeah. Make a nice uniform hook, try to keep the same hook wall all the way around. That's the goal we're after. <laughs> Pretty much what we're looking for as of right now. Set will take care of that. Clean that up a little bit more. up in here. Basically make sure we don't have anything stuck down here in this little crevice. Something like that. And after I'm done trimming and everything, I'll go through and clean up all the edges. Kind of the foot we're looking for. Uh, she's got a very solid hoof. This here, I like leaving my frog. I kind of call this the fuel pump for blood and the hoof. With having that there like that, usually if they, if they can rest on this or even use it, step on a little bit once in a while, it's kind of kind of works like a pump to to get the blood flowing in your hoof. Seems to keep. Seems to keep the hoof a little healthier. So basically what I'm gonna do here is up to this point I get all the pressure off of this this spot here that was uh, an old injury. So what I'm gonna do, we're still not gonna be able to get exactly where we wanna be, but I'm gonna trim her up to the way I want her and then I'll putty this in, fill it in with putty and, and get her looking good. That way she's got a foundation to walk off of as well. Uh, and that's the old abscess. That's what's remaining of it from yep, when I picked from, her up in December. From, yeah, whenever, from whenever that happened. I don't, think she's, I don't think she's favoring it any as far as bothering her. Or she doesn't seem to 
according to the way the foot is wearing, I wouldn't say she's favoring it. Yeah, I don't see her favoring it. She'll stand light on that back left leg, but mm -hmm. she doesn't limp or anything. Right. There you go. I know a lot of, there's some guys don't like using sole pressure off of their shoe um, as long from my experience from what I do as long as you got a good solid hoof wall or a good solid sole I like using that as well just helps support the uh, the hoof walls as well as as the whole hoof This one's basically the same thing up here on this corner. We'll take that. Just chipping off a little bit from being barefoot, so we're gonna take that and chip that off. There we go. Oop. That's something that's gonna go away after we put a shoe on it. That's what we're looking for. Put them in the forge, heat them up a little bit so they, uh, they're they easy to work with. Two. 
So when I go to do a clip on a foot, I try to align perfectly out with the tip of my frog to get your clip. Bottom of this, grasp back a little bit. Like that, that way my clip will set in nice. And I got my shoe in the forge right now to heat back up and then we're gonna burn it on there. You burn it on so that you can see if the foot is even? Yep, make sure the foot's all even. And, and it takes care if you have anything on white line, it'll burn the white line out of it. Which as you can see right now, we're still sticking the past a little bit on this. And that'll all be taken off. So basically what that is, is my access. So basically what I want to do is as much as possible, stay uniform off of off of these points be the same distance off of my frog from the center to here from center to here and then having my having my uh, frog shoot down about as close to the middle of the shoe as at all possible to try and keep the horse balanced out as good as possible now there is times and situations where you can't do that which with a little bit of time and corrective shoeing that'll happen this one is not 100% to where we want it. That's my way of doing it, not saying it to what everybody's perspective is of doing it, but that's what I like doing with mine. I've had good luck doing it that way. So therefore, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, I guess. And with these nails, something I get asked quite a bit is, does this hurt the horse? And the answer is absolutely not. So basically, your hoof, the outer edge of the hoof, now if you send your nail in too far, it'll hurt. But basically, the exterior of your hoof is kind of like the tip of your fingernail. So therefore, there's not gonna be any feelings in there as far as it hurting. Now that nail is curved, is it not? Yep. So, so the nail is curved right at the end. Right, right at the end of the nail. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got a little bit of a point to it. So therefore on this side of the nail, on the head of the nail is flat on one side and the other side is ribbed. So you always, the rough part of your nail, you always turn towards the inside. Being this is curved a little bit, that'll take your nail and push it out. This is why farriers wear chaps because if the horse pulls his foot down and the nails are still or the nails are protruding out of the shoe it'll rip the farrier's legs open or his pants open So on your bigger shoes, your draft quarter size, you'll have five nails on each side. Now, hey. Now on your smaller ones, hey, you're only gonna have four. 
on each side. So after, I just like bending them over like that till I'm done, ready to do the finished paddock on it. That way it doesn't, if it does decide to pull away from me, it doesn't catch on me. It'll tear me out. I uh, just got a little spot right there where I'm going to end up probably filling this in right here. Broken out. Then I'm going to back this up a little bit. We got, I don't think, I think it's just from the horse being barefoot so long. This ended up growing a little weird. So we're going to take this back, keep this horse as uniform as at all possible. And with that being said, backing this up to where we want it. I believe this is going to start to come down real nice and straight. So therefore, if you watch your lines here, do this number. These lines, by the time we're done with them, I'm hoping to have these lines coming down the street, going around. That's something I watch as well as we're going. Look more like this. Yep. So we're looking more like this. And with this, the reason this is doing this. From my experience is this being a little long so basically every time it walks it, it stretches that puts a little pressure on it like it keeps pulling so therefore this is going to suck tight it's going to it's going to give at its weakest point of the hole so it could and, and this one it went right here so basically by backing this up making this universal and putting a shoe on it this should start growing out to be a nice round to where we want it is the outside hole wall. This side's gonna flare easier than the inside is. Why is that? Uh, I honestly don't know why they do that. It's the way, I believe it's the way they walk. Now if I'm doing if I'm showing uh, a horse that is in the shoring, they want that. So therefore, therefore the inside here will be straight, and this side will come out and flare out this way. So I'll have I'll have shoe on this side about this wide coming around, versus on the inside flat. If the horse, what did you say? If the horses are what? Now there's, if the horse is going to the show ring, like oh, if the I, show ring. if I, uh, like earlier today, I did uh, three of them that are in the show ring. And those all get shot that way, which those horses wear a different shoe than what these do. Yeah, this is just a farm utilitarian shoe. This is your all terrainian shoe. If that's what you want to. It's kind of kind of the same thing as with tires. This is a multi-use tire versus the some of the other shoes I do. The bigger shoes are basically like somebody go putting big old tires and rims on their truck yeah. for and a show. And you'll notice that he's got these gold splotches right here on the toe and on the heels and I'm going to explain that to you next week Those being bigger nails, do they not twist off as easily? Yes. Okay. Yep, these are a little bit tougher to work with. So basically, I'm gonna run my rasps down underneath the nails. Just take that loose 
pull up out of there. Rasp that back. Round that off a little bit. And come over and pull this back. This thing here is adjustable, so I can adjust it to wherever I want it. Do the different settings on a smaller horses. I got a different one I use. everything up. That's what I like seeing on my hopes after I'm done with them. This is just the hook buddy I used to uh, fill in. If I got a little crack like this, it's broken out. Uh, it just helps it prevent it from keep on breaking out. Put it on there and it takes about 15, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to cure. And then I'll go back over and smooth everything out. Make it all, make it look good. Well, that went real well. I don't know that she's ever been shod before. I'm sure at some point in her life, she had a pretty good chance of being shod, but a lot of the Amish do not shod their farm horses. They shod their buggy horses because they're out there on the road, but they do not shod their farm horses. They just let them go barefoot. So there's a chance that she's been shod before, but I really have no idea, but she did absolutely excellent. She didn't mind the hammering on her feet. 
she didn't mind the majority of it. For about 90% of it, she was good. If she had the opportunity, she would shift her body completely to the other side. If you let her go, she would shift all the way over to the other side. But if you pushed her back, you know, she would line up and, and work with you. But she was not a cantankerous little girl at all. She was really quite the angel. Now I will be able to take her on longer drives. I'm going to have to wait till 6.30, 7 o'clock in the evenings to harness her and take her when it's a little bit cooler. But I'll be able to get her out on the road. I didn't want to take her on the road without her being shod because of her, the asphalt making her feet chip even more you run a you run a greater risk of that so i just didn't want to take her out on the street until we actually had her shod the babies i'll be giving you an update on them here pretty soon i've been working with the harness putting the harness on them in the tie stalls behind me and then you see their bridles are hanging up and i have been putting their bridles on them and letting them stand in the tie stalls and yesterday I took them out and let them walk around for about an hour and five, hour and 10 minutes with their bridles on and let them eat and all that. So I'll be showing you that um, in, a, in the next couple of weeks. But I wanna get the girls used to wearing their harnesses and wearing their bridles before we start trying to ground drive them at all. And then once we start ground driving them, then we'll start ponying them behind Jewel in the Pioneer Four cart. And Orla, my Amish farrier, was extremely hot. But being Amish, they're not afraid of work. They're used to hot. He drives all the way from Indiana down here to Georgia. Actually, he drives to Ocala, Florida. He drives in on Monday, gets here Monday morning, works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday catches me on the way up from Ocala, along with a guy that has eight Belgians, and then returns to Indiana. He'll drive all night tonight, or he'll ride all night tonight with his driver, and then he'll get up and start shoeing in Indiana tomorrow morning. He said that he shot about, or he worked on between trimming and shotting, about 70 horses between Monday through Thursday. I'm super thankful and blessed that I've got an Amish ferry that comes down from Indiana. And I don't have the drama of that comes with English farriers. So I hope you learned something because I know I sure did. I know it's hot out here and I know it's hard work. So I'm very appreciative of the farriers and what they do because it's a it's a it's a tough job. So to get out there and make a living doing it my hat's off to you. So I appreciate you watching this week. And as always, remember who you are. Be kind to those around you. Stand up for what you believe in.